Mr. Hartgrave here, and this is the ultimate free-to-play resource guide. Your guide to everything resources in Marvel Strike Force. We're going to cover all of the stores. We're going to cover all of the currency. We're going to cover what you should be doing about daily milestones, energy, and, and gold spending. Uh, all of that and more in this video. This is part of a greater playlist. If you're new to Marvel Strike Force, or even if you've been around for a long time, uh, this is a series of videos that I update and put out, some more often than others. The last time I updated this video was about a year ago, and people keep asking me, they're like, Mr. Hargrave, the stores have changed a little bit. Can you come in here? Can you tell us about them? And that's what I intend to do during this video. We're going to go store by store and talk about this. We just had some changes hit the war store. So my advice is a little different there. The last time I did this, we just got the Cosmic Crucible store. And my thoughts on that have altered a lot. So if you watch the last one of these, um, definitely check out this one because a lot of things have changed. Now, my overall advice, and this should be no surprise to anybody, is hoard everything. Don't open anything in Marvel Strike Force until you're told to. And I wouldn't spend anything either. One of the things you're going to notice up there is that I got 52 million gold. The reason for that, they like to run gold spending events now. They had stopped doing that. They took a year off where they didn't run any gold spending events, but now sometimes they do. And it's always best when you're spending your resources in Marvel Strike Force that you're double dipping, triple dipping as much as possible. You want as much bang for your buck. So when they're running milestones where you're going to get extra for spending cores, extra for spending gold, extra for opening gold orbs, for opening training orbs, you never know what they're going to be asking you to open next or spend next. It's best to hoard up as much as possible. First, we're going to talk about gold. So everybody is worried about gold and Marvel Strike Force. It's one of the you know, most important currencies to people is gold. How much should you spend every day, right? Now, you can spend a, you know, around a million gold a day. I've been saying this for years. Spend a million gold a day. Let your gold orbs accumulate. You definitely shouldn't spend more gold than you make a day. You shouldn't be opening gold orbs unless there's an event that tells you to open gold orbs. Absolutely, 100% that we seem to get gold orb, old, gold orb opening events quite often now, at least once a month or maybe even twice a month, we're being asked to open gold orbs and get extra rewards. I, at times, have spent no gold in a day, and that has been the right decision, especially when there's a gold spending event coming up on the horizon. It is the best idea in Marvel Strike Force to have the most amount of resources available at your disposal at all time because the best characters in Marvel Strike Force have not been released yet. And that means you want to keep your assets liquid. You don't want to dump them into characters, definitely not prematurely and definitely not haphazardly. Um, what you want to do is look for advice like I give out in the rest of my videos. So tied to my other videos is this safe to build guy. These characters are the most meta characters in the game at the time I make one of these. Now you might be watching this video in the future. This might no longer apply. Uh, this was April of 2023. I usually try to date these and I update my videos in that are in this playlist with this information. So if you're spending gold, I would kind of stick to stuff like this, something of the characters that are going to hold their value. Like Red Hulk isn't going anywhere. You can dump as many resources as you want to into the Horseman characters, into Kang, Apocalypse once you get them, whatever. These kind of characters aren't going to leave the meta. They're so, so good. The higher up on these lists, the more meta they are. As we go down lower, you got to start to worry about like Bionic Avengers. I know a lot of people now over invested in them. And who knows how they're going to hold up. Hey, let me know if you're watching this in the future. You still using Bionic Avengers? Probably not. All right. So that's gold in a nutshell. Save it up. Don't feel pressured to spend any gold a day. But you do get extra value out of spending 1 million gold a day. You do get some cores. But it's only a small amount of cores. So if you don't want to spend any gold a day, that's fine. And... I know a lot of people get worked up about it and they're like, well, I need daily growth on my roster. And I'm like, guys, I'm in the end game. There's no daily growth on my roster at all. I wait. I wait it out. 
Um, I spent, I had 400 gold orbs uh, I, that I was talking about quite a bit when I had it, but now it's gone. Why? Scourges. Because it was important at the time. And I won all those scourges. I got free five reds on all the horseman characters because I spent heavily, I spent all my gold surplus when it was time to do those scourges. And we weren't having gold spending events, so I didn't get any extra value out of it. What I got was the ability to play and win scourges, and that was worth it to me. Really, it didn't make any sense. I should have waited until that first gold spending event that finally came back after two years. I would have destroyed that one. Wouldn't have been top of the leaderboard. I think that was like seven red Dormammu or seven red Ultron. So it can really pay off to hoard your resources. I would definitely not spend a lot of resources in the gold store. I would not spend my gold this way. The best way to spend gold is on star ranks for meta characters levels for meta characters. Those are the best way to spend your gold. The gold store is fine when they put tier, uh, tier 18 gear in here. That's probably going to be your best investment, but it's going to be at a very high price. It is much better to win events and get your gear that way than to try to buy your tier 17s from this store. Now, um, I definitely bought a lot of these tier 17s at this high price when I was going for, I'm still, I'm almost have my large apocalypse, right? And I don't spend money on this game. Very little money I spend on this game, maybe $10, $20 a month. Um, so yeah, I had to buy, if I wanted to get a big apocalypse, like within a year or two, I needed to buy as much tier 17 gear as possible at the start. Right now, I'm only buying mutant gear. I literally have one character left to tier 17, and that is Psylocke at this time. And then I just need um, level five isotope eight. The only team I have left to do is Death Seed. So I'm set up very well from that. So it did pay off for me to spend a ton of gun gold in here when I did, but now I'm done. And um, I don't know, I'm really gonna try not, I don't advise rushing into uh, Dark Dimension six or whatever Dark Dimension you're looking at. I don't recommend rushing in general in this game. You're gonna hit a stone wall anyways where your account doesn't progress. And that's my main argument to people who are like, I need to spend a lot of gold every day. Where are you going? It's a dead end. It's a brick wall. It's you're going to get stopped. So you're just going to decide what point of the mountain you're going to take a chill on. And right now I'm hanging out at the top, but you're all going to come meet me soon anyways. So I probably just ended up wasting a whole lot of gold buying these tier 17s. But hey, it's what I did. I'm a content creator for you. I would say stay the hell out of the gold store. It's a waste of resources. Premium orbs. Now, Throughout this video, I'm going to be giving advice from my standpoint. Some of my advice is universal. Some of it is going to be situational and premium orbs. I do an equation on these, right? For premium orbs, there's a certain percentage that I'm looking for. And whenever I look at an orb, whether I want to open it or whether I want to hoard it, uh, you always want to hoard it, by the way. You want to hoard everything. But I look at the percentage and I look at, I always look at the worst case scenario. So the most common thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get 15 shards of one of these characters. I will count up how many characters there are and see how many of them would have an impact on my roster, taking into account that the featured characters are going to be most likely to drop. So right now, until I get Icarus to seven stars, the premium orb holds more value. As soon as I get Icarus to seven stars, I'm done opening this until they put new featured characters in. Because every time it hits Icarus or Cersei, it's just turning into Ultimate shards, right? And I would rather have like 500 premium orbs stored up for when they put in uh, whoever they're going to put it, Kang. They'll probably put Kang in here, right? And the day they do that, I want to make sure I've got as many premium orbs as possible so I'm ready to jump on that. I don't want to be burning them for Icarus the whole time. Now, if you're a new player, you don't have Icarus or Cersei, open these until you got them. Those are two of the best characters in the game. I heart highly recommend new players open premium orbs until you unlock Cersei and Icarus. Once you get so far away from a star, though, once you get them up to the point where you need like 100 shards, 120 shards, 300 shards then it doesn't make as much sense and you're going to want to check the ratio. Like right now for me, I don't really want to open premium orbs until all of Masters of Evil are in here, which without Kang hasn't happened yet. We're one character away. 
I want all of uh, Invaders in here. And I might even want all of the new Warriors in here, uh, Gwenpool and Firestar. Um, that's what I'm kind of waiting for. Until then, the odds just aren't good that I'm going to pull something that's actually going to matter in my roster and get me to the next star rank. Like, yeah, get another star in Agatha. It doesn't even matter anymore. We're so far past needing that. Plus, she's probably going to be farmable soon, and that's going to devalue her shards. Yeah, so I'm always running that calculation on those. All right, let's talk about red orbs. This is a good topic. Only open your basic red orbs when the dark promo credits are boosted. When does this happen? I don't know, man. It's random. Whenever they don't have a character featured and always check the orb before you open it because sometimes what the picture they show isn't right. That happens a lot. So scroll down to the bottom, check this, scroll down to the bottom of this. And if there's a character down here at 15%, that means they're a featured character. Don't open this orb. You're going to open your elite orbs instead. You're going to open your four elites. You're going to open your five elites. You're never getting those characters to six or seven, so those don't matter. We'll talk about that when we get there. There is a strategy to your sixes and sevens, but they're going to be rare, and you're going to open them rarely. Basic orbs, only open them when the dark promo credits are boosted. What that looks like is right down here. Dark promo credits, it says 10 to 50. That means they are boosted. You're going to get between 10. You're going to get 10, 30, or 50 of them. And dark promo credits are more important than anything else in this game right now. And probably until the end of the game. Dark promo credit characters are the strongest characters in the game, typically. And you can't pull red stars on them from any of these orbs. The only way to get red stars on dark promo credit characters is to use dark promo credits. So only open your basic red stars. For all players, I don't care what level you're at. It does not make any sense to open these when the characters are boosted. We're going to open the elites for that. And you're going to get elites when you open these. It's a waiting game. It's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, character orbs. You're going to see these from time to time, especially when there's new characters. Never spend cores on these. It's a horrible waste of cores. There's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, you can core these orbs and get the new character. Who cares? Doesn't matter. It's not going to help you. Getting a few extra shards on a character, getting an unlock on a character early doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. There's no character that is so good when they come out that it's going to be so much more valuable to have them for like an extra month or two or however long it's going to take you for the free-to-play unlock or for them to finally become farmable. Just... Take your time. Take your time and wait. Instead, focus on getting more event orbs. When they have event orbs for characters like they do right now for Iron Fist, focus on that. Blitz, unfortunately, is a better, you know, I'd rather do the blitzing than spend the money or spend the cores. The cores have a fluctuating value. I think the argument to this is, well, cores aren't worth anything today. But tomorrow, when they have a core spending event, or an event that can be won by spending cores, cores become extremely valuable. If showcases keep becoming a thing, as they are right now, I don't know if they're going to do this again, but in case they are, event campaign, this is kind of akin to an event campaign, except you're not getting shards. What you're getting are training orb fragments. I would much rather spend my cores stocking up on training orb fragments for events, for my roster, for the future than I would for a temporary momentary boost to a character that will eventually be seven yellow in my roster. All characters, if you play this game long enough, and I'm talking years, are going to end up at seven yellow in your roster. You will run out of training mats. You will run out of resources, but all your characters will be at seven stars eventually, no matter what you do, because you're going to get those shards. They're going to keep giving them to you in things like special event orbs, in the basic orbs, in these legacy orbs. You know, there's going to be new legacy orbs that come out. They're going to have the new characters from the year before. We're due for another one of these. We got legacy three now. There's going to be legacy four. They're going to keep throwing them at you. All right. Uh, we got these orbs down here for the different scourges. These are really cash only. So not really something I'm going to talk about this because this is a free to play guide. 
Training orbs. I would hoard these. I, I put a high value on training orbs. Without training orbs, your gold orbs are useless. I was definitely at a point in this game where I had like, I had like 400 gold orbs, but I had like no training materials and I was at a really bad spot, but I was able to work out of that. Um, and I want to give you this tip in case you missed it because I don't know how many people talk about it, but at a certain level of this game, when you hit level 70, you can go do the hard version of the campaigns. And that is going to allow you to farm not only gold orbs, but training orbs. And this is how I was able to fix my problem. Every day, instead of shards, I farm train, uh, training orbs and gold orbs. Now, if you still have really good characters that you're farming shards for, that is probably worth it. But if you are done farming useful characters, and no, Black Panther 1mm, one uh, one mm, um, Spider-Man Noir, Madeline Pryor, they're not going to do anything for my roster if they have another yellow star on them. So it is my priority to farm gold orbs and training orbs because I'm going to play this game for however long it's going to be out. Another year, another two years, another five years, I don't know. Gold orbs and training orbs are far more valuable than about any shard out there unless you're farming something really super important to you and meta. And in that case, I would say do both. Spend the extra cores a day to buy a little extra energy if that's what you're doing. That's still a valid use of cores, by the way. If we're talking about how to use cores, um, spending cores for campaign energy daily, it's better during events. Like right now, we're in an energy spending event, so I'm spending the uh, 50 cores. Sometimes I'm even doing a couple of the 100 uh, cost uh, campaign energy recharges. That can be worth it during these events. But if you're a new player doing the 50s every day, especially if you have a lot of stuff you're farming, it does make sense. And what I typically do, my typical routine is I will spend about uh, 720 energy every day, um, usually 150 cores, even when there's nothing going on, just to get the extra gold that comes from the uh, Save the World milestone. That's usually a nice little mark to hit on there. That's the one I'll try to hit on that. So I'll try to spend about a million gold a day to get the cores and about 720 energy every day. Is it 720 or 780? I, I can't remember. It's one of those, the one that gets you the extra gold on there. Let me see if I can show it. I've already done it today, but it is this one. Yeah, I believe it's milestone six where you get this extra 24,000. Yeah, that's the one. So I'll usually spend till I get to milestone six every day. All right. Moving on, because we got a lot of store to cover. Uh, ability orbs, I have no use for blue or green. I would say open those at will. Um, I'm just hoarding them because I have no use for them. Same thing with these tier three orbs. Although there are tier four materials in there, I keep holding out some hope that they're going to buff these or run some kind of orb event where opening them will actually get you points towards a milestone. It's possible. If you don't need it, don't open it. And that is the heart of all this information. If you don't need it, don't open it. I don't need those orbs. I don't need those materials. So I'm not opening it. Uh, mega orbs. It's the same kind of equation that I run on the premium orb, except um, th th you can get to really good odds on these. About twice a year, I will find a time where I have 50% odds to have a meaningful impact on my roster. And that's typically what I'll wait for. And don't be fooled by the 10% section. Always look at the 85% section because that's what's most likely to happen. This is usually pretty hot garbage in here. Um, I'm going to have to wait a few releases before this gets to 50%. I'm probably guessing another few months and there'll finally be enough characters in here where it'll be like, okay, if I open this, there's a 50% chance that I'll get shards that are useful. Right now, I think I'm sitting around like a 10% or 20% chance and that's just really too low for me. Um, if it's at like a 30% chance or 40% chance, that's really good. 50% is like the best as it gets. The best this is ever going to get, unless you're a new player. If you're a new player and you're looking at this and all these characters, keep in mind which ones are meta too. You know, 50 shards of Dr. Voodoo ain't helping anybody. So keep in mind which ones are really going to make an impact on your roster. What is, you know, most uh, meta right now? Like 
if I was just going to look at this from a meta standpoint, just as a thought experiment, I would say, okay, Kestrel, super meta, right? Weaver, good. If I don't have these characters, I missed all the, you know, anniversary events, the mess ups. Cersei, yeah, super impactful. I got three characters. Um, Gambit, pretty damn good. He's in the Cosmic Crucible store. Don't really care. I got three characters in here that are super meta, right? So even for new players, I don't know, maybe wait until some more brand new characters come in here that are a little fresher. Uh, this is a very lackluster orb to open. You can get very lucky. It can be very exciting, but also pragmatically, there's only three characters in here that are actually going to transform your roster. The rest, they're not going to do anything for you. Even if you had them in seven yellow, it's not going to help you that much. So you'd have to wait. Uh, Milestone three orbs are the best path for new players to get the characters they need in this entire game. So open these as soon as you get them. Another thing about Milestone three orbs is since we get so many of them, they'll probably never run an event where opening them will get you anything extra. If they are going to um, improve this orb, they are going to make a Milestone four orb and then they are going to remove the Milestone three orb. So open this orb as soon as you get it. Other orbs that tend not to matter are your Armory 14 orbs, your Armory 15 orbs. Yes, I have an amazing amount of them. That's because they screwed up. They screwed up months ago. By the way, just a little update on this. So months ago, uh, maybe um, uh, like six months ago, they screwed up. They sold all this, all the orbs you see right now. I've never opened them for 20 bucks, okay? An insane amount of Armory 14 and 15 orbs for 20 bucks. Well, was it worth it? I don't need them. I bought them because I'm going to play the game until like the end of time. So fine. It was a good deal because these are valuable, except are they like when I say I spend 10 or $20 a month, the reason why sometimes I go, I'm free to play is because the money I spend is sometimes stupid and does nothing. If you never use it, what's the point? Um, so any of you that missed that deal, don't worry about it because you probably never, you probably didn't need them. There's probably no point to it. All right, Armory 16, Armory 17 orbs. Um, yeah, I would go ahead and open them. I don't think hoarding them is going to do you any any favors. If you don't need them, don't open them. But like right now, I need uh, mutant gear. So I'm, I'm opening, I need mutant tier 17s because I just need one character before I go get, you know, big apocalypse or whatever. So yeah, I'm opening these. I need that mutant gear. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the Blitz store and just talk about this. These... Purple Catalyst Orbs that you can open with credits are um, ridiculous and pointless. I'm not opening them and I don't think they're going to get buffed. I don't think they're going to get improved. I guess there's one way they might get them. No, they're not going to get improved or buffed. I take that back. I thought of a way they might be improved, but no, they're not going to happen. So open as many as you want. If you're a new player, you want to catch up, go ahead and open those. They're never going to be involved in an event or anything. We have way too many of them. Blitz Orbs can be good. Uh, they do feature characters at 10% in here sometimes. And I think a lot of questions new players will ask is, should I open these or should I focus down characters? I would say you should focus down characters in favor of opening these orbs unless the featured character is really going to help you. Then I would go for it. I can't see Brawn helping anyone too much right now. So these probably, you should hold these until there's a more meta character in here. Um, instead, I would um, focus on buying character shards of meta characters. I believe for new players, my recommendation is to go for the Kree minions, unless you were able to take advantage of these amazing showcases that they had where they were literally giving out 100 shards of every Kree minion. Um, that's some of the better things to do in there. And that relates back to my beginners video. But for new players, or no, for veteran players, really, we just tend to wait until they have a good featured character in here to spend it. Um, I wouldn't say when they put in like teal uh, basic catalyst in here, if that ever happens, I mean, that should happen. I don't think this is necessarily a good value on that. I've never really bought catalyst parts heavily in here. Although, I mean, you could if you need them. Depends on how much you blitz, right? The more you blitz, the more credits you're going to have, the more dumb you can be with them. All right. Moving on to the raid store. 
I would wait until Teal Gear is in this raid store. There is nothing in here I would buy with my currency other than character shards. And there are very few character shards that are worth anything in here at this point. Um, I would definitely hoard this currency and wait for Teal Gear to hit this store. And then I will liberally buy Teal Gear once it hits the store. Uh, before I didn't need Teal Gear anymore, I would buy this store out of Teal Gear. Uh, anything I was short on, if, if I'm short on anything today when it comes to Teal Gear, I would definitely buy it out of here using raid credits. You get an extreme amount of those. As for, far as the orbs, uh, the raid orb, I tend to wait until there's a new character in there. They're extremely useless orbs. You can open them if you want to. They rarely run events where they pay off. Open your raid orbs all you want. Blue gear, open them. P t purple gear, open them. If you don't need them, you can hoard them. Uh, the only reason to hoard these up is, well, in case they run an event, which might happen, or if they give you a new unique. Sometimes they'll give you a new unique piece like they did with Chromium. And then if you have these hoarded up, it can really help you get that unique piece. And what I'm talking about are... Oh, this orb doesn't have any. So yeah, open all those that you want. It's the elite orb that has the, the unique pieces. Come on, just show me. There they are. These guys. So when they decide to... And they have a couple of these on deck. When they put a new one of these in, in the game, like they did with Chromium, it really helps to have a bunch of these orbs so that you can open those up and capitalize on that. It's going to be the same thing with the Teal Gear Raid Orb. Um, I opened mine because, like I said, I'm like pushing for Big Apocalypse. If you're not, then hoard these up. If you're not using them, hoard them. The Raid Orbs. Open these immediately. They will not make these part of any events. That when they update them, they remove the old one. They're just like the milestone orbs. So open these immediately. You can get a lot of good shards out of these if you're a new player. If you're a veteran player, uh, there's actually some gear in there, believe it or not. Um, I don't think they have any teal gear in there yet, but maybe someday they will. But if they do, they're going to remove these orbs. So open them or lose them. All right, moving on to the arena store. Um... There's not a whole lot of good character shards in here. If you're still buying character shards in here, great. Dagger's probably one of the best characters in here right now. Uh, training orbs. It is absolutely fine to come in here every day and buy the training orbs. Um, I did that for a very long time. It's another way I got myself out of the training module hole that I was in. I had way too much gold and I had no training modules. So every day for a year, I came in here and I just bought this. And uh, since I do very well in the arena, my credits really haven't gone down. I will probably start doing that again after a new character comes into the arena orb. I'm waiting for the next character to come into the arena orb, and then I will open these to get them up to the next star level. I don't think it's a good value to um, to take them up if you're if you need 300 shards. Like right now, I could spend these and get Deathlock up to his next star level. Um, I could get that seven star. However, I don't need it. Deathlock's doing everything he needs to do at six yellow stars. I don't need the seven yellow stars. I'll wait for him to become credits, uh, to be, become viable with credits. And the cadence on that is, first they come into the orb, then they go into the supplies at 975 credits, and then they get reduced to 500 credits. Ideally, you want to wait for them to become 500 credits. You're going to play this game for a long time. Wait until the price goes down. If you are really close to the next star level, then yeah, this is a good deal. But when you're trying to buy 300 shards, it's better to buy that at 500 credits than at 975. The War Store is a disaster. However, it did just get an improvement. The shards in here are super hard to farm characters up to seven yellow stars. The good news is, is they're starting to take a lot of those characters and put them on the hard campaigns. That's great. The main thing people are going to want to talk about in the war or uh, the war store right now is what's new. The only thing to consider buying in here is the teal gear war orb, and I wouldn't buy it. No way, no how. There you go. There's my hot take. I'm not buying it. Why? I'm waiting for the teal gear war orb too. There is no way, no chance that I'm buying orb one now. If you are trying to get Dormammu and you want to get him right now, this is not the worst idea. 
It'll get you a lot of tier 16 gear and you can use that to go get Dormammu. Hey, cool. That's, that's nice for new players. And new players, don't ever buy these other orbs. These are a waste of your credits now. The only orbs you want to consider are these. And I would highly suggest waiting for the Teal Gear War Orb too. Even if you want, you know, even if you don't have Dormammu, it's probably better to wait for the Teal Gear War Orb too. I don't know. Um, you're gonna make your decision on that. I wouldn't over, or I wouldn't over open them. Open them. Open them until it makes sense. Until you have the tier 16s you need, and then stop and hoard. Wait for the Teal Gear War Orb too. This very much feels like a trap. I feel that the War Orb 2 should come sooner than this one. They delayed this so much. By the time it hit the game, it just felt useless, especially to veteran players, but I think even to new players, uh, the value on this. It's better to get your Teal Gear um, six teal, uh, uh, Tier 16s from events. It's better to get them from events and, and maybe not artificially rush it with this orb. Wait for the Teal Gear War Orb 2. When the War Orb 2 drops, buy the hell out of it because they're not going to put another orb in here for like ages. So at that point, when they drop the Teal Gear War Orb 2, um, you know, I'll probably keep an eye out, see if there's any events coming up and then just buy the hell out of it until, until I got what I need. Once I have what I need, then I'm going to stop buying it because if you're not using it, don't open it, right? In the supplies, um, I am buying the Uniques. Because I have a lot of war credits and I'm only buying the ones that I'm super short on and that are needed by other characters like gamma radiation isn't bad. There's no characters that need it, but I only have 22 of them. I think as soon as you have like 60 of them, 68 of them or so, you know, 70, once you get to be around, once you get about 70 of these uniques, you don't need to buy them anymore. You can wait until you see that you're going to need them for a bunch of characters. Sometimes they'll put out a team like they might put out a new tech team that needs all the hammer tech. And then I'll be in here buying those as much as I can find them. But until that's announced, I would just try to keep a, a healthy amount. And that's the best thing to buy in here. I wouldn't buy any of this other stuff. I would just focus on even new players. I would focus on just these guys. These are the most valuable things in the store. Okay. Cosmic Crucible. This is brand new. When this came out, uh, we didn't have character shards in here. And my advice was to buy nothing until like, or I guess I, I was just buying tier uh, 17s in here, which is I still look out for. I still look for the um, uh, mutant ones that I need. And if anyone's going for apocalypse, you do need to buy the mutant uh, tier 17s because you need to take like 10 mutants in. It's crazy. So there's like 10 mutants and then there's like, you know, five bio, five, there's no tech. And then one tech, sorry, like Kestrel's kind of like half tech. Like it's ridiculous. So mutant ones are worth buying. Um, buying tier 17s out of here is fine. I would definitely buy Gambit Shards. New players need to buy Gambit Shards above anything else. He's the best character that's available in here. Black Panther's pretty good here as well. Um, although he's available in other places. So I would tend to say go for that instead. I wouldn't waste this Cosmic Crucible currency on that. Um, especially not this, you know, elite currency which, once again, I'm waiting for some kind of update to happen in here. It doesn't seem to be happening. I don't find any value in any of these orbs. I think it's much better to wait and just buy out these characters. Like, take all these characters up to seven stars uh, with these elite Crucible credits um, and wait. I don't know. If they improve the Teal Gear Crucible War or uh, Teal Gear Crucible Orb, great. I guess the next thing we're waiting for is another color of orb to hit in here. If that comes in here, maybe I'll buy it up. I don't know. I just don't need anything that drops out of here. I need very specific gear when it comes to teal gear. Like none of this odds are whatever I pull out of here is not going to impact my roster at all. I think the thing I would need most are like these mutant kind of basic pieces for teal but I only have like a 4% chance to get what I need. So I would have to open so many of them to actually make a difference in my roster. I think if I got to the point where I had all my tier 17s and I was just missing some of that basic teal, then I might open a bunch of these just to like make it happen today as opposed to tomorrow. But I don't know. The best move is probably to wait until a new batch of characters come in here. 
for you to, uh, you know, buy up to seven stars. All right, let's talk briefly about the Elite Store. So the Elite Store, um, you're going to get to a point in this game eventually where silver credits, silver promo credits no longer matter. I'm already at that point. My entire roster is, my entire roster that's important is at five, five red stars. And if you are looking at one of these guides that, you know, me or somebody else put together of all the meta characters in the game, you have everything here at five red stars. You don't need, you can do whatever you want with your silver promo credits. It doesn't matter. Basically, you just want to get five red stars on all the meta characters, all the characters you use on a daily basis. You want to get to five red stars. And I wouldn't stress out too much about it because we get quite a few silver promo credits a month. Over 150 a month you get for free. On the free track, you get 150 silver promo credits a month. I think that's probably closer to 200 or 250 now, especially with events, especially with them being put into more milestones, especially if you're spending uh, 720 or 780 energy a day, then you are getting close to 200 or 250 silver promo credits every month. So you don't have to be stingy with those. I would be stingy with gold promo credits and I historically have been too stingy with gold promo credits to the point where I have 800 of them hoarded up. Now, do you need to be this stingy? No. Are gold promo credits that important anymore? Hell no. Dark promo credits are important. Dark promo credits are so much more important than gold promo credits. It's absurd. So if there's a character that you can buy up to seven red with gold promo credits, you absolutely should. Uh, one of the best characters that I have right now that I'm thinking about is Hela. The other one is Icarus. I'm definitely taking Icarus to seven red stars as soon as I get seven yellow stars on him. Um, Hela's another great one. I just don't use her in enough game modes. Typically, I'll want seven red stars on my arena characters or on characters that are doing a lot of heavy lifting on in Cosmic Crucible or not really doing what they need to do in Cosmic Crucible. Like, um, I don't know. I might want them on Dagger right now. Seven red stars on dagger actually sounds like a really good idea for what I'm going through in Cosmic Crucible. And I would always, if I'm going to buy a character to six red stars, I want to intend to buy that character to seven red stars. There's some thinking out there that's like, well, just get as many six red stars as you can. That's not really that great. It's only a 10% bump in stats for taking a character from five red to six red. It's a huge bump taking them from... No red to five red. That's a lot. To take them to five to six, it's 10%. When you go to seven, it's an extra 15% for a total of 25%. That's a huge difference. The 10% is not. 25% is. We all know percents, right? So if you're going to do six, I would highly suggest doing seven. I would not suggest doing a lot of characters to six as opposed to taking more characters to seven. Have a narrow roster instead of a wide roster, and you're going to do better at this game. This is why I outperform other people in my bracket. Um, other people who are at the same level as me, I'm doing better. And I would say the reason why, it's not because I'm great at this game. It's because I build narrow. I have a very narrow roster that can do things that other people's characters can't. And that's what I would suggest doing as well with your gold promo credits. For dark promo credits, I would avoid buying any character in this store to five red stars with dark promo credits. Wait for them to give them to you. That's my new advice because I made that mistake with Ultron. Ultron, I bought to five uh, stars. I did it early on. I was an early adopter and I got screwed for it because they had an event where I would have been given those five stars for free and I would have got a ton. I would have, I would have, I would have Archangel at seven red stars right now, but that's fine. It's fine. Couldn't have known those things in the past. But now we know that they will literally hand you five red stars on a dark promo credit character. They'll do it for all of the Scourge characters. Until you get seven yellow stars on a Scourge character, see if you can get into the top 50 if you are anywhere near that. It's going to get easier every time it runs. Go slow on the Scourges. And eventually, it should be extremely easy. Use the guides on my channel. I've been in the top 50 on many of those, and I can show you how to do it. It's getting easier every time because every time someone gets seven yellow stars, they get removed from the leaderboard. They go to a separate leaderboard. 
So it just gets easier and easier every time they run one of these scourges to get into the top 50. That gets you five red stars for free. All right, moving into the elite orbs. So when new characters come out, they're boosted at 15% odds. That's when I would open elite orbs. And the four elites are the best because new characters, we're only getting them at three yellow stars anyway. So what are you going to do with six red stars on a new character or seven red stars on a new character? Nothing. It's going to be ages before. If you're free to play or a light spender like me, it's going to be ages until that happens. Ages. So I would wait on that. Um, I would definitely, oh, I, I always open uh, the four elites when new characters come out. If it's a character that I somehow suspect will be released so I can get five um, yellow stars on them within a short amount of time. We used to have these on event campaigns. Haven't had that in a long time. Um, Iron Fist, I was opening higher red stars for because um, I knew he was going to be a blitz release and I blitz pretty damn hard and I'm going to get closer to a five yellow on that than I would any other way so that I would open a five red four. Now, the sixes and sevens, and I only have sixes right now and sometimes I have had sevens, when I will open these is when a character comes out that it's so clear that they are so impactful that they are going to be meta in this game forever, like Kang. When Kang came out, he was a character that I was opening my sevens for. I was opening my six for. I got six red stars on him. As soon as I get him to seven yellow stars, he's going to seven uh, red stars as well. That's why I'm saving some extra pro, uh, gold promo credits for that. Um, so when a character comes out, they're really, most of the time, if they're really that good. They're going to be dark promo credits, but for Kang, for whatever reason, he was normal, yellow, uh, normal. Uh, he was in the orbs as a normal character, non dark, dark promo credit character. So I said, okay, great. Let's go for him. Those characters are going to be extremely rare, but when the, you, when, when a spider weaver, when a Kang comes into the game, that's what we save these sixes and sevens for. I would, they're so rare and so valuable. I would really wait until those epic characters come in to do that. Uh, we're running out of stores now, so my advice is going to get shorter here. Um, it doesn't matter what you do in here. The ISO 8 store doesn't matter. I would, um, I definitely wouldn't spend on these. I've never bought any of this crap. This is pointless. Uh, the buying the specific crystals for currency is stupid. Don't do that. Uh, you'll get plenty of orbs throughout your lifetime of the game. If you if you don't need them, don't open them. I don't need level one ions, so I don't open them. Who knows? Ultimate store. Um, yeah, orange gear isn't important. You could hoard up your ultimate currency in the hope that they'll put teal, teal gear here in here, and they might. So there is that. I actually find Ultimus orbs to be better than premium orbs uh, because the, I don't know, the odds, you get so many of them. I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're better, but maybe I'm wrong. I guess they don't have the boosted characters in them is the difference. So you're not more likely, like once I have Icarus and Cersei to seven stars, they're out of there. And now it's an equal percent to give me something that could be good. So I do feel that things are maybe a bit more even in, I mean, they're literally more even. Everyone's at 0.61% in here. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I would still, I'm going to open those. Like if I'm going to open something in here, it's going to be those. I have messed around with these orbs before in the past when orange gear wasn't as plentiful as it is now. So I can see opening those again when the teal gear comes in here, but I have no idea when that's going to happen. Um, getting a boost from the Ultimus Orb probably isn't the worst thing, but once again, I'm going to wait for a bunch of teams to come in there that I need right now. It's just not going to do enough for me. Uh, costume credit store, we don't have to talk about that. There's nothing to hoard in there or do in there. That is going to... Um, do it, I think. Man, I, I think I'm going to wrap this video up because we're going to bring it in in under an hour this time. There's a lot of other videos on this channel, so check them out. There's a lot of other videos in this playlist, so check them out. Thank you for everybody for being here with me live. It's the first time I've done uh, one of these live, and it was a good time with everybody here today. And Grave Diggers, keep digging. I'm gonna fight on my own. A 
Yeah.